Hello everyone and welcome to the very latest edition of Travel Tales. Today I invite you all on this in-depth audiovisual journey where I share my photography, my videography along with some personal anecdotes from my solo trip to the God's own country, Kerala. Now Steve Jobs once said, "A life is about creating and living experiences that are worth sharing." And I really really hope that you guys enjoy this experience of mine. Kerala, a state that has nearly 600 kilometers of Arabian Sea shoreline, famous for its palm-lined beaches and tranquil backwaters. This trip started for me as I landed at the capital city of Tiruvananthapuram. I had booked my first two weeks at the Somarthiram Ayurvedic Resort in South Kovalam, known to be one of the oldest and the very first health resorts in India. It took me a day to settle in and explore the resort that was fully equipped with a swimming pool, private access to the beach, authentic treatments and a lot of pretty sights on the property. I soon adapted to the healthy ayurvedic lifestyle of starting the day at 7 a.m. with hatha yoga practice, followed by a relaxing swim and a healthy breakfast. By around 10:30 a.m. I was ready for my doctor's appointment followed by a 2 hour long treatment for body detox and lower back strengthening. My lunch was served at 2 p.m. on the dot after which I was free to do as I liked. My evenings were usually reserved for a beautiful sunset stroll on the beach with my camera of course. The waters at the local beaches were pretty rough to swim in. at this time of the year though there were some locals who came in with their families to just about wet their feet in the frothy waters every day felt like a brand new experience in a totally different setting at chawara beach i made my first friend a super excited doggy who i named jumpy As you would have already guessed that he would play and jump on me every day and dirty my clothes with his paws. One of the evenings I had walked all the way to the stunning Azimala Shiva temple. The overcast sky helped me take some dramatic pictures, but just before it got dark, it started pouring. I had no choice but to make my way back to the resort, which was now about a kilometer's walk on the sand and in heavy rain. completely soaked by now as i reached outside the resort gate there's a quaint church as i climbed the stairs and was crossing the front of the church there was a moment that was so beautiful that any photographer would have loved to capture what i saw was thousands of devotees spread throughout the beach the pouring rain the pastor continuing his sermon against the backdrop of the blue hour in the foreground i saw men women children kneeling in front of the church without any umbrellas in complete devotion as i was crossing them the photographer within me urged me to stop and shoot that moment as these moments are really rare but the camera battery died just then so i didn't stop and once i reached the resort it was too late the moment had passed but it is now etched in my heart forever instead of my camera's memory card As the pandemic had drastically reduced the number of tourists visiting from abroad, the resort that usually has about 300 staff members was now operating with only 30. My interaction was pretty much confined to the staff and my therapist. On a particular day though, I became friends with the local boy Amal, who practiced gymnastics and was training to be a dancer. I shot some footage of him on the beach after which I decided to explore the local areas with him on a bike for the next couple of years. As he had grown up in that area, he had some of his favorite spots that were completely not tourist area and he was happy to show me around. We visited the nearby harbor where I got to see the life of the locals up close and unfiltered. The mood was relaxed while the sun set and the drama in the sky
As I went along with the treatment and detox, I was asked to ingest a special medicated ghee every day after the treatment. This was something I dreaded each day as the taste and smell made me want to throw up. But the purpose of it was understood on the seventh day, when I was given another oil to consume with warm water that would remove all toxins that had gotten attached to the ghee that I have been consuming over the week. The smell of the Ayurvedic oils at the treatment center and at the time of the treatment, let's just say, wasn't my favorite smell. I experienced some stormy nights followed by some calm, pleasant mornings. It was always the best feeling to wake up and have the entire ocean in front of you, filling your entire being with the hues that keep changing throughout the day. I also looked forward to my daily swims. As we all know, water is the best way to heal both the inside and the outside of our body. Sometimes, being on your own forces you to get to know yourself better. May even result in some extra creative juices flowing. I use my time to shoot my surroundings and also some self-portraits at the resort. It is a thrill to be able to use your skills and create something that becomes a forever memory. I had also carried with me a set of portable watercolors and found it extremely therapeutic to paint the surroundings I found myself in. As the days turned into weeks, I realized that the routine and therapy I was receiving every day had a visible effect on my overall well-being, but for my lower back, I needed to continue for a longer time for the effects to become integrated in my daily life. I had to continue with this newfound routine. Once my two weeks were over, I decided to check into a hotel called Uday Suites, which had everything I needed to continue the same Ayurvedic routine and also explore the city of Trivandrum a little. The first place I decided to visit was the famous Sri Padmanabha Swami Temple, which is known to be one of the richest temples in the world. Unfortunately, since no cameras are allowed inside the temple, I decided to shoot from the main street outside and manage some beautiful sunset shots. Post that, I was asked to wear a mundu and once inside the temple, the atmosphere just took me back hundreds of years. The entire energy of the temple was so grand, the vibrations were so high that I truly felt timeless in the limited time I had before they shut the doors. On other days, I stepped out early in the morning to explore nearby beaches. I realized that my early mornings was almost the end of fishermen's work day as they were winding up their nets and boats to take the day's catch back with them. My invigorating morning walk from the beach was filled with the local nuances of the city. The smells and the sounds filled my senses from the local ghee roasted dosas and the strong filter coffees. And I just couldn't have enough of it. The relaxed atmosphere in the morning which led me to some gorgeous old architecture that had withstood the test of time. One of the evenings, I decided to walk towards the Vailathura beach, which seemed to be just a 20-minute walk, but actually took me 45 minutes, and I still didn't manage to reach the place I wanted to. But that, in a way, became a blessing. I found myself walking around the narrow streets by the coast, where a major part of the local population lives. Apart from the few excited kids I met, there were some beautiful souls I spoke to and was able to capture their picture in their natural environment, which was literally on the coast. I spent around five nights in Trivandrum. So the best thing for me was the friendly Uber drivers. You could call them anytime and one of them actually became a guide for me who showed me around whenever I called him. With the comfortable stays, the daily swims, exploring a few sites and some amazing restaurants. He was also willing to take me to my next destination, which was about 80 kilometers away, the Ravis at the Ashtamadi Lake.
Now this hotel overlooks the lake and has stunning views from the room. As I reached the property, I was welcomed by some pouring rain and a thunderstorm. I decided to enjoy the view with some banana fritters and some filter coffee. Now my plan of action was to again unwind and enjoy the property and the various activities they had on offer. I was introduced to the head chef and the culinary director of Ravis, Mr. Suresh Pillai. Chef Pillai is a household name in Kerala and is also known as a participant in Master Chef UK. He was thrilled to prepare some of his specialities for me. A dish called fish nirvana with appam just blew my mind and I ended up in a food coma. I spent my next few days enjoying the property and eating the most amazing meals prepared specially for me. I finally figured what food heaven feels like. Though my vegetarian diet went straight out of the window right into the lake for the next few days. Though my other routines were still on track. The day before I was to check out, I decided to hire a car and explore the Munro Island, which was about an hour's drive away. I purposely picked a time that would get me to the island just before sunset. It is technically a group of small islets with a lot of migratory birds, narrow canals and waterways. My boat guide decided to venture right into the heart of the mangroves to impress me but since it was already dusk and most of the light being blocked by the thick foliage, it was not so possible to get any shots. right back around and get me out of there. The rest of the scenic tour contained widespread coconut farms on the lake shore, beautiful lagoons and this is all part of the popular Kolam district. The famous Kolada boat race, it takes place here after 28 days of the Onam festival every year. I think a 90 minute boat ride around the island is just enough for you to enjoy the beautiful nature here. All you need to do is make sure that you pick the right time, which is either the sunset or the sunrise. While basking in the divinity and the serenity of the splendorous nature bonified in front of me, the clouds above were not to be missed. The formations were so dazzling and infused with colors that could only be rightly termed as cloud porn. And as they kept changing, I was lucky enough to click a ton of beautiful pictures. After a few days at this paradise, I decided to head back to Kovalum and this time I picked a property close to the sea yet away from the tourists. The Gateway Beach Resort was a perfect choice and great find as it gave me access to nature, a few restaurants to eat at, bike that I could hire and most importantly, a beautiful room with a huge balcony facing the sea. I continued to follow my healthy Ayurvedic routine. Barring a few non-vegetarian meals, of course. The beach 
also offered activities like scuba diving and such. The owner of the Cochin Dive Center at Kovalam even graciously offered me a special package. I thought this was because he really liked me, but then later on I realized that there were no other customers that morning. Before I knew it, it was almost a month of me exploring this beautiful state and the second wave was on the rise throughout the country, so I decided to fly back home to be with my parents, taking back with me new experiences, memories, better health and a whole lot of data to be edited. So that's all for today folks. It's always a pleasure having you on my travels with me. So see you on my next adventure. Nandi.